Take Earth and shrink it down to like a schoolroom globe. So now we can think of distances relative to that. And ask, how high up did Bezos and Branson go? Okay. So here's the schoolroom globe. How far away would you say? Quarter inch. You say quarter inch? Okay. They went the thickness of two dimes. Oh. And a boy who jumped out of a balloon some years ago? Yeah. Um, what's his name? Uh, Felix Bumgardner? Mm-hmm. Thickness of one dime. So this idea that they're going, oh, I see the curvature of the earth. And this. No, you don't. You don't. I'm sorry. Did Jeff Bezos doesn't see the curvature of the earth? You will, you will see the edge of the earth, but ask how far away is your horizon when you're only that high up? You can just look at that, go to the schoolroom globe, go two dime thicknesses up, and then draw a line to how... To ask how much of Earth do you see? You'll see a circle, but that's a circle cookie cut out of the larger sphere. So the only, it's a perspective it, issue. It's a perspective issue. And oh, by the way, the images when they showed uh, Felix Bumgardner, where he's prepared to jump, you see this curved Earth. That's a fisheye lens, dude. Okay? Fisheye lenses take horizontal lines and bend them convex when you're above the midplane of the fo- of the photo in order to gather in okay. more of the image correct that's the only way you can distort it to fit it onto a flat plane because right. it's looking at a full sort of 360 well 180 all right and it's trying to get it in but what happens if you take that horizontal line the horizon and put it below the midplane of the camera it then bends the other way mm. bends the other way in fact i have a um, i have a tweet that did this. Look for Felix and put, throw some keywords in there with my Twitter handle. And I have a, the example of the photos. So, no, he didn't see the curvature of the earth, but you think he did and he's high up and what do we need NASA for, right? He's one dime, one dime thickness. Um, Elon Musk authentically goes into orbit because they didn't go into orbit. They went up and fell back to earth. Mm-hmm. He uh, authentically goes into orbit. So he is a centimeter. No, well, not even. Uh, let me see. Yeah, a little less than a centimeter above Earth's surface. The folks who really saw Earth were the, 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 the folks that went to the moon. We went to the moon nine times, three astronauts a pop. 27 astronauts have seen Earth from the moon. And that'll change you. That, do you know Apollo 14 astronaut, Edgar Mitchell? I have a quote from him opens this book and that's all you have to read because the whole book issues forth from that quote you know right here it is Mm -hmm. Edgar Mitchell Apollo 14 you develop an instant global consciousness a people orientation an intense dissatisfaction with the state of the world and a compulsion to do something about it Mm. From out there on the moon, international politics looks so petty. You want to grab a politician by the scruff of the neck and drag him a quarter million miles out and say, look at that, you son of a bitch. Edgar Mitchell also believes some wacky stuff. Did you know that? Yeah, I've spoken with him about it. And he uh, he was one of the, uh, was he co-founder of the Noetic Institute? Mm. He, was, he was a big fan of the possibility that there was a, deeper level of consciousness and I don't think it involved drugs but just that there was a deeper level of consciousness that the brain might be capable of if subjected to the proper influences and he told me how he came across this okay I'll tell you they're on their way back from the moon and they're in the capsule and the capsule rotates it helps to stabilize it among other reasons for that happening. And he happened to be positioned in the capsule for three days where the windows to the capsule were aligned with the plane of the solar system. Which means every time the capsule rotated, what came in and out of view was the sun, the moon, earth, and all the planets. And so he's there for three days watching this drift by. 
and he felt like he had descended or ascended into a trance state that was beyond what he had ever experienced here on earth by normal things you encounter just being a human on earth. And that led him to wonder whether this was an achievable state by some other means, by some other forces that you could emulate here on earth. And because he experienced that and I didn't, I, what am I, who am I to say? I, I'm not, I'm not going to judge that. He believed in psychokinetics. He believed people can do things with their mind. I, 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 he, he had a lot of like very strange things. That I he think was he. Interested in. I think that the the cleanest way to say that is, he believed there was much more capacity of our mind than we had previously tapped. Mm, yeah. And that opens up the gates to all these other things. But I, I was I was just sharing with you the the psycho the 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 experiential origins of why he thought that way. Yeah. But uh, the point is that that can change you. And uh, in the chapter Earth and Moon, I talk about cosmic perspectives. As as you ascend, the, the Earth does not look like the schoolroom globe. Right. Color-coded countries? <laughs> uh, you know, I, only as an adult did I look back on that and I say, you trained me from elementary school to know who my enemies are and who my friends are by color coding contiguous land masses on a globe to teach me about the planet Earth. But they weren't trying to do that. They were trying to explain- It's a consequence of it. Geography. I knew who it the evil, evil, godless right. Russia, Soviet Union was. Right. Okay, their country was painted red. All right, not ours. I knew this even if it was not on purpose. It had a subliminal effect and well, when you go into space, the country borders go away, except yeah. for two places. There are two places. You can still see two borders from space. One of them in the daytime, you can see the border of Israel with surrounding deserts, because Israel irrigates. And so it's green, and the surrounding areas are brown. You can see that from space. Another border, which you can see from space at night, is of course North and South Korea right mm, there. Yeah, that's it's, crazy. And that's punched up. I mean, if you were in the dead of night, you don't know the difference between the ocean and the land as the as you your sight line crosses um, North and South Korea. And so, uh, so what you and if you look.